So um, today we we'll basically know what is going to differentiate between the different classifications that you use, which is more effective. So uh, this is something called the visualized threat curve. Once you um, get the result list of the classifier, and you can do it for the anomaly or the normal. So in most cases, you will do it for the anomaly actually to find out uh, how much uh, uh, you know uh, threshold will have what ROC value. Like I said. Uh, if you want to know about the classification, just go check out my previous video. The link is in the description. But you can, uh, the ROC curve is going to help you to understand the efficiency of the classification done. So if you visualize the cost curve and the cost benefit analysis curve for an anomaly, which is here uh, from the result list, you will see the threshold curve that is the ROC curve that you just found, and you will have a cost benefit curve. Uh, the threshold you can vary according to the cost matrix. Uh, so all these, the cost matrix editing, everything isn't there in the previous video. This was just to show what the ROC curve is going to do. So like you see, um, the threshold values have to be, uh, the ROC curve area covered has to be more towards um, one, the higher it is, the um, costlier, but the more effective it is. So usually business wants to keep it somewhere in between with uh, uh, max security possible for um, an average amount of money uh, what else we can do is now if you have these attributes each contributing to one type of attack right uh, if you see um, like so Rucha will definitely be a big compromise so uh, what you do is you can have each of these uh, distributed to the type of attack it is associated to. So this is multi-class dot um, arf. Yeah, so these are the uh, the attacks that I'm going to talk about. Uh, so this is how I'm classifying each attribute to this particular attack. Uh, that's in the uh, database that I just put um, it's again an R file uh, for the R file info again you can check out the previous video then um, uh, if you see the R file which I was talking about that is the multi-class R this is my training set so that is what I'm going to compile it out of you see this this extra attribute called X attack that is basically what I'm classifying each attribute to as part of one particular attack so right now I've only come up, come up with uh, like the five basic attacks that are available. So multiclass.arf is uh, available on GitHub on not the NDD data set, but a separate uh, GitHub account, which I'll link below. And uh, so this is the X attack that I was talking about. So each count is classified into the labels and these labels are each corresponding to one or the other attack. So what these attacks are, um, so this is basically the attack it is classifying into. So one is this, two, three, four, and five. So uh, yeah, now we can uh, do, do, do the same classification uh, on the training set that we want. So yes, what is the attributes I was looking for? Yeah. Okay, I don't see something. Oh yeah, the server account and everything is there. Correct, correct. Okay. So moving on. Mm. I classify each of these attacks into one type of label, and that is the main attack type.
so I here choose the classification set and the test file is what I obtained here so that's the test for multi class R and I set it up now the class will be normal attack that is the thing that I'm X attack the type of attack is what I'm going to start for So now here I am for KN and I'm taking 99 to show you what the RSQL changes is. It almost goes up to 0.9 something. But the cost evaluation for that ROC curve area would be very high. So I started now. And um, uh, this is the sort of ROC curve that I observe for um, this um, KNN value. So this is how your ROC curves can be found out and you can understand the effectiveness of your classification. And you can also reclassify it to include some other attributes um, in your system, uh, in your learning system.